Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hanging Out with Howie. I have two very, very special guests that are very good in their field, Michelle Brannon and Lori Cummer. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. And as everyone can see, uh, tonight's topic is going to be grammar. You know, does it really matter? Um. Ladies, this is going to be mostly on you. I'll, I just have a few questions and some feedback from before we even did the video, but uh, from the uh, advertising we did out there and posting. Um, let me, I'll ask the first question before I get to the naysayers. Um, do you think that, uh, would you think twice looking at, at someone's grammar, if you're hiring a vendor, whether it be a DJ, photographer, whatever, and you had choices? Do you want to take this, or, Michelle? So I, 100% I would. Um, you know, sometimes I think the quality of their, um, you know, correspondence is, you know, relative to the quality of the product that they you know, provide. So, you know, somebody mm -hmm. who really wants your business will, will make it a priority to ensure that they have proper, you know, proper grammar. I mean, to, to a point, we're not saying that needs to be, you know, the King's English or the Queen's English or what have you, but it, it, <laughs> you know, something that's, you know, a properly, you know, sentence would be, you know, I think they would have a higher priority to me over, over a, a vendor who didn't. Lori, what do you think? I'm on board with that. I teach grammar <laughs> and I always tell the kids that when you go for a job interview or you submit an application or a letter of interest, the person that demonstrates correct grammar and uh, well, just in person or in writing is going to get the job over someone that maybe doesn't have correct grammar. Yep. And mm -hmm. that's the truth. <laughs> that's, that was my impression. And that is also why Lori does all of my copy for me. And I am very good at, at certain things in my business, but I am not the one that would be afraid to ask for help. Uh, for instance, if it was music related, I would probably go to Brian because Brian would not only know the right song, but he would know, you know, what the guy had for lunch when he wrote the song. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the depth of his knowledge. And I feel that way about having someone actually doing the copy, you know, with my ideas and actually proofreading. And um, so, Lori, you've done, uh, you did my EPK, which is yes. um, an electronic press kit that I send out to businesses and vendors and prospective clients. And you also did for Rachel, too, as well, did you? I not? did, actually. Yes. And, and and how did that come about? Did she she contact you or she did? I was actually on vacation in Ocean City, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> and um I said, sure, why not? Uh yeah, I love Rachel. And uh it's always nice to have a fresh eye. Mm -hmm. You know, with anything that's written. I get asked a lot at work, please look at this email before we send it out, or a letter to parents. And it's fun for me. I don't know. I think Michelle, Michelle and I have had some fun grammar banter because <laughs> we really love it. We, it's, it's like a DJ loves music, I think. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I, I had the same thing at, at my place of employment that, you know, I'm the I'm the proofreader and, you know, everyone gets scared when they see me bring out my red pen. Because uh, I'm ready to, oh, no. <laughs> ready to edit. Right and all, you don't need to make it perfect. Just make it so it's legible. And, and you know, I can't help but make it, you know, <laughs> what I Go ahead and perfect. say it. Perfect. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I have a problem. Somebody at work gave me a plaque that said, I'm silently correcting your grammar. 
<laughs> I've that's seen that. hanging behind my desk at work. But uh, all kidding aside, no, you don't have to be perfect at all times. But I think that when you promote yourself on social media, whatever you put out, whether it's a post, an EPK, uh, any kind of advertising, you need to put your best foot forward. And mm. if you aren't the expert, then ask a friend, ask somebody. I'm sure everybody has a Lori or a Michelle in their life. They should. That's for sure. <laughs> now, what do you, do you think that, um, you know, the, the, you know, at, at least, um, you know, proper grammar be, being succinct um, is, is a sign of respect for your prospective client or any business dealing. Would that be a sign of respect? Oh, I should think absolutely. Absolutely. Especially when it comes to, you know, now in this day and age where we're corresponding via text messages or via email, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, it might be okay for, you know, teenagers to text back each other, you know, mm-hmm. in lowercase with no punctuation, but you know, no one's going to think twice if you write a text message or an email in proper English, but they're mm-hmm. definitely going to think twice if they see it, um, you know, and lowercase letters or, you know, not proper greeting or, um, you know, no punctuation. So, um, you know, we're all used to seeing it correctly, but it definitely stands out when it's done incorrectly. That's so true. It really does. It's kind of glaring, actually. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um yeah, but uh, mm. <clears throat> like spelling, and there is spell check, but that's not always going to work. I've found like if you have there, there, and there, you need to know which there you're looking for, mm. or two, two, and two. So I see those mm-hmm. mistakes quite frequently just in people's posts, mm-hmm. um, you know, but there are ways you can look things up. You can Google them. You know, or, if you, I, I, or I would just call you. Yes, I'm <laughs> always available. <laughs> or, or even well, as you, you said, just brought up. Oh, I'm sorry. Read it before ahead. you said it. I'm sorry, Howie. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. I was going to say, if everyone just reread what they're typing instead of being so quick to hit send or enter, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think many times they'll catch those mistakes themselves as opposed to, you know, making that mistake and, and sending something in error. Well, here's the moment everybody's been waiting for, Howie, to make a joke. Um, you did <laughs> mention punctuation, and there is a big difference, I have noticed, because, for instance, this sentence here, I helped my Uncle Jack, comma, off his horse. Now, if the comma wasn't there, oh, my, that would be bad. <laughs> yes, punctuation okay, now- is really important <laughs> it's important in this case now i'm gonna before we even did this like i said there were there were some a little bit of pushback and we hadn't even done the video but um i'm going to read something to you and I, i'll do it anonymously because um you know i i think it, his intentions were were good but this is what he said um It's a mixed bag in my area. I try to practice correct grammar, comma, but the majority of people in my market don't really care about it. And there is a line that it could be detrimental to some, period. They may not want some hoity-toity, in parentheses, nerd for their event. Hmm. What, What is your take on that? Well, hoity-toity, that's quite a word. Uh, I see where that person might be coming from. Mm -hmm. However, when you look at a magazine or when you look at anything in print, do you think that's hoity-toity when you see it correctly? Like in a magazine, for instance? Maybe maybe that's what Michelle was alluding to before. Uh, about the Queen's English, yeah, that would be hoity-toity, but I don't see where proper grammar would be hoity-toity. What do you think, Michelle? Yeah, I um, I think 
the the quote that you just read from from whomever um they have a point a little bit i don't think you want to um i don't know uh, unfortunately maybe in this day and age proper grammar and punctuation is considered you know snobby or or whatnot but um you know you don't want to over talk to someone who may not be you know maybe at the same um you know grammar level as you um, but mm-hmm. I don't think it would be disrespectful to, you know, have proper grammar, punctuation letters. You may not want to use maybe big words that you may have, you know, originally thought you would use. But, um, you know, I think obviously writing to your audience and you can still write to your audience while maintaining punctuation and grammar. Mm, very good point. Very good. I, I I was struggling with this. I mean, I I can I can empathize with this particular person's uh, you know point of view, but then again, I'm wondering like if if I did, would it be pandering to them to you know like almost like I'm oh well, okay I, yo bro uh, yeah I'm <laughs> down for that gig uh, you, you know I, I just you know I. I think I would err on the side of caution and have Lori write my copy. <laughs> yeah. As far as being in person, I think everyone should be themselves and speak the way they normally would. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think when you're putting something out as an advertisement for your business, I think it's important because if you have correct grammar, you can cast a wider net. You can, you know, do That's corporate right or family events. I, I don't think anybody would look at something that was written beautifully and say, wow, that's that's not for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just think it's professional looking and, and that's, that's just the way I feel, it's professional. Mm-hmm. I think your that's level a- of DJs, excuse me for interrupting, but like mm-hmm. you are at, an upper level of mm-hmm. skill. And I think your electronic communications should reflect that. Yeah. It's interesting. You use that word casting a wider net because it's been said many times before when we're actually performing at an event, we're also auditioning for future clients because uh, the famous Alan Berg once said, listen, when you're doing a wedding, chances are that there's going to be at least two or three people that are either engaged or about to be engaged at that, that particular uh, event. So mm-hmm. put your best foot forward. Um, do you ladies have any final thoughts or something maybe I did not think of because I'm grammarly challenged? <laughs> <laughs> that would be grammatically challenged. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, See, folks, <laughs> I need help. <laughs> no, I need help. I can't help myself. Um, I don't know, Michelle. I, I just think um, it's something that in a DJ's business, they should look polished and professional in their electronic communications and any posts that they make too. I agree a hundred percent. I mean, uh, you know, everybody's being judged at every moment, you know, every post that you make, every text that you send, you're being, you know, you're being observed, maybe not judged, observed. but, but um, mm-hmm. people will notice um, what you write in, 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 you know, that will be a f- reflection upon you, whether you're, um, uh, you know, the, the way you conduct your business or how you, um, you know, are as a, as a DJ or a professional, I think every, you know, everything that ties into it is a piece. And, you know, it, it may sound silly to talk about grammar in, in, in this sense, but it, it's, you know, it's important. It really is. And, mm. uh, and not only with, um, you know, proper grammar and punctuation, um, but also, you know, proper, you know, 
I don't know, salutations and making sure, you know, thank you notes and, mm-hmm. um, you know, replying in a timely manner. I think that all ties into, you know, proper business etiquette and, and um, you know, grammar and, and, and punctuation as well. So that's my two cents. <laughs> that's wonderful. So yeah. how does it feel to be the go-to person, both of you in your business world, you're the go-to ladies for, you know, grammar. Um, is it like a point of pride or, you, you know? Well, I think as Lori said, to me, it's fun. I mean, I, I mean I'm sure 99% <laughs> of the people out there would be <laughs> rolling their eyes. But, um, you know, They've I was editor-in-chief of my school paper. I was a journalism major. I worked at the Union Tribune and I wrote copy for a newspaper um, for advertisements. Um, you know, you're the, you're the educator, Lori. So I defer to you for the real rules. Um, but, uh, you know, to me that, that, that's, that's what I like to do. Someday I'm going to write a book and, uh, mm. <laughs> you'll, you'll see, but, um, but yeah, to, to me, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy finding, um, you know, things that can be enhanced and made a little bit better and and helping somebody in in the interim. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. I absolutely love grammar and even sitting in my free time, uh, I have to show you this book. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Oh, it was not backwards before, but it's Grammar Girls no, that's Quick correct. and Dirty Tips for Better yes. Writing. I mean, people give me gifts of grammar because I love sitting and reading, uh, you know, just to make sure. Plus, I tutor in uh, different languages, actually Spanish primarily. And, uh, you know, you've got to have your grammar game there as well. So it's just it's like a DJ and music this is my mm-hmm. music. <laughs> yeah. Lori, do you find yourself listening to uh, journalists or, or watching TV and, and, you know, pointing out mistakes or the, your ear just hears it and you're like, ah. <laughs> I, I do. And I have to say that uh, it's shocking, <laughs> but I, I do hear it. I've heard a few presidents make errors when speaking, but you know what? I do that too. If I'm speaking quickly, I I can make mistakes. I make mistakes texting. And once Mm -hmm. in a while, if I'm posting something to Facebook, I'll read it after I hit send. And then I quickly take it out because I see that I've, you know, forgotten a comma or where it should really be there. Right, right. (laughs) So, (laughs) So I can't like allow that. And my kids make fun of me and say, mom, by the time you get done texting, it'll be old news. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but I can't help myself. I love it. Yeah. Well, and it's really it. wonderful to see that passion that you both have for that. And the gift that you have. Um, I know, Michelle, you're probably like Lori, where she she did my EPK and and as we mentioned earlier Rachel's, but you were on vacation and you knocked it out in like five minutes or something. And I'm thinking oh, it was my God. closer to like fifteen till I got the corrections in and sent it back. <laughs> oh, okay, but it was so. it's super fun. It's like some people do Sudoku and I do this. <laughs> yeah, I I thought I really thought I had something really hot there, and I spent. Oh, I don't know, three or four hours. And, and then you looked at it. <laughs> I, was I did a little off. rearranging. <laughs> <laughs> did it in 10 minutes. Well, ladies, thank you so much for your uh, uh, gift to uh, our viewers here. And we empathize with you folks. Um, if you do you um, and I'm going to do me and I'm going to ask for help. Um, if you have your own thing, that's, that's wonderful, but you know, take it for what it is. And thank you again, Michelle and Lori, and we will see you next week. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Bye. Bye.